After we've seen in the last episode how societies without God are doomed to collapse, if you missed it, I will put a link in the description box below. Now we need to talk about the magic pill. The magic pill that fixed all the issues in the Arab society and turned those people from the worst group of people into the best people that walked on earth. This magic pill is what we call the Sharia law. And no, Sharia law is not about cutting the hands of everybody and exploding while saying Allahu Akbar. Sharia law is so big, we're gonna dedicate a number of episodes to talk about every part of it and to see how this part made the society much better than before. This is part number one, Tawheed. We're gonna understand what is Tawheed. As we all know, the Arabs were a polytheist society. By now, we already understand the concept of God in polytheism. Weak, limited gods. And more importantly, gods that can be bribed. What does that mean? It means that I can be a corrupt businessman. I am giving bribes, I'm cheating on people, I'm selling knockoff products, I'm conning people into buying my goods, I'm trying to make people addicted to my product so I can gain more money, I don't care about their health or their well-being. And in the end, after I become so rich, I can go to the temple or to the gods and bribe them with some money so I can make sure that God is happy with me and he can give me more riches and I can make sure that I have my salvation. Whether you call this bribe a sacrifice to the temple or tithing or indulgement parchments or a donation to the church, call it whatever you want, God can be bribed. And there are people who are willing to accept this bribe on behalf of God and to sell you God's services like forgiveness. In the end, voila, you are a corrupt person and you have salvation and righteousness is not that important. So religion is not what is dictating society. Religion is not what is telling us what is correct and what's not. But we can get that from man-made laws. And to be fair, man-made laws can be good to an extent. Man-made laws can reduce the crime rate, especially like bank robberies, like murder and stuff like that, big stuff. But man-made laws can only go so far. For example, lawyers can find loopholes in the laws. Businesses can avoid paying tax by doing some, you know, accounting tricks. You can go to a doctor and this doctor recommends that you do a blood test or a scan that you don't need, but you know what, he's taking commission. Or he can suggest a specific medicine for you, not because it is the best medicine, but because the pharmaceutical companies is giving him a lot of benefits. And it's legal. Employees can stay on social media all day claiming that they're working and in the end they take salary. And if they're not caught, it's okay. You can visit a car mechanic for an issue, he will fix this issue while making a problem in another part of your car. So after one month it will break, you will go back to him for another new issue. Businesses can make you addicted to their product. Or they can make fake claims like for example, this product is made from fruits while it is 99% sugar water and 1% fruit. But they didn't technically lie, it has 1% fruit on it, so it is made from fruit. Or they can say this hair product has a secret recipe that will fix all of your hair problems, while in reality it has nothing. Or they can say our toothpaste is recommended by 9 out of every 10 dentists. A scientific study, which we all know is fake news. People can and will be toxic to each other. People can hurt you so deeply with just their words, and technically they didn't assault you physically, so they didn't break the law. Government officials can and are taking bribes, whether it is a hidden bribe, illegal, but you know, no one knows, or it is a legal bribe in front of everyone, and you know what? You can't do anything about it. An artist can make music video clips that is all about pornography and drugs and alcohol and violence and present this video clip to children. He doesn't really care about ruining the morality of a whole new generation as long as he's getting richer. And you know what? It is legal. Businesses can objectify women and use their bodies to sell their products. Why shouldn't we use a woman's body to sell cars? Why shouldn't we use a woman's body to sell burgers? You know what? Just stick a picture of a woman's body on any product and it is legal. Who cares about the consequences? This list can go on for hours and you know what? This is not the point of the video. The point is man-made laws can help the society a little bit but it can't fix the hearts and it can't produce a safe, happy society, ever. But la ilaha illallah can. Only the belief in an all-powerful, all-knowing God can produce people who actually care about each other. People who are trustworthy. A trustworthy doctor, a trustworthy car mechanic, trustworthy employees, 
trustworthy government. This cannot be achieved with man-made laws or with the best police system in the universe. When people know that God cannot be unfair, they remove this devastating idea from their head. The idea that you can cheat your way in life and cheat your way in the hereafter too. The idea that you can have salvation without working for it. Think about that. On one side, you have one man who is following God's rules as much as he can. Abstaining from sin, doing good deeds, giving charity, helping others, trying as much as he can to be a good person. And on the other side, you have a guy who is living in sin day and night, not caring about others, drunk all the time, moving from one girl to another, breaking their hearts, cheating his way in business, getting money that he doesn't deserve, and in the end buying salvation by throwing some money to the temple, or by claiming that someone else died for his sins? Do you think it's fair that both of them have salvation in the end? Or is it clear that that's a scam? They always say if it's good to be true, then most probably it is. With Tawheed, we start to understand that life is a test and no one else can help you with it. No one would die for your sins. No cheating, no priest or imam or whatever can, you know, give you a loophole or a shortcut. You have to actually work on yourself and become better. There is no way you can avoid that. This is exactly what monotheism or in Arabic Tawheed brings to the table. before some ignorant kid writes in the comments Tawheed is not in the Quran let me tell you that Tawheed or monotheism the concept of saying that God is one is literally all over the Quran more than 2000 times and you know what it is all over the Bible Old Testament and New Testament the only thing that you will never find in the Quran and in the Bible is one clear statement that says God is three. But you will find a lot of statements very clear saying that God is one. This is called monotheism. In Arabic, we call it Tawheed. Knowing that God is one, we understand that no one can help you. Not temple priests, not the high priest, not the Pope, not Imams, not Awliya Allah. Mary can't help you. Jesus can't help you. Saints can't help you. Muhammad can't help you. No one can help you if you're not putting the effort and trying to be as good as you can. And all of these people who think that they can live their life in sin, do whatever they want, have all the freedom they want, and in the end, they somehow deserve salvation because someone else paid for their sins, they are either living in complete ignorance or lying to themselves. And because we know that God is not something that we can touch or see or feel or imagine, no human can claim that he is God like the Pharaoh of Moses, and no group of people can claim that someone is God like some people unfortunately did to Jesus, peace be upon him. And because we know God is all-powerful, we cannot really bribe God with money. God doesn't need us, we need him. And because we know God is all-knowing, we cannot really hide our crimes from God like we hide from the police. We understand that we can get away with a crime against man-made laws, but we cannot get away with a crime against God. And because we understand that God is the provider, we feel that we owe him everything we have. We owe him our sights, our hearings, our tongues, our ability to walk, our breath, our ability to breathe, to eat, to drink, everything. We feel that we owe God every dollar we earn, because God is the provider, not the HR department. We feel that we owe him every good moments we had with our loved ones because you know what? He is the one who put this love into their hearts. And because we know that he is the all merciful, our relationship with God is based on love and on trust, not only on fear. And because we know that God is the ultimate judge and he is the only one who is gonna decide our destiny, whether to paradise or to hell, we know that there is no escape out of righteousness. We know that we have to work on ourselves and become better as much as we can. We know that there is no way someone can worship his desires until the end of his life and then get away with it. So what is the categories of Tawheed? The first category is Tawheed al rububiyyah Tawheed al rububiyyah is attributing the creation and the maintenance of the whole universe, including ourselves, only to God. This is obviously not enough. Because if you even asked the Arabs before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were idol worshippers, but they still did Tawheed al rububiyyah Like for example, in this verse, if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they will say Allah. 
then why are you worshipping these pictures? And their response is, we're not worshipping really the pictures, these are pictures of saints, we're just asking for intercession from them because they have a good connection with God. Sometimes we ask intercession and sometimes we ask the saints directly for blessing or for help. But we know that God is one. Don't, don't you have brain? If, if you know that God is one, why are you worshipping idols? And you don't really get a convincing answer to this question, but it's something like this is, this is what we're used to. This is what we found our fathers doing, so we're doing it. And you know what? We're better than you, so our religion is better than yours. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a fight. It's, it's, there is no brains in this conversation. If you guys missed the episode, The Six Steps of Satan, we talked in depth about this issue in particular. So if you missed it, I will leave a link to it in the description below. Then we have Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat. Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat is knowing who God is. And knowing the attributes of God has a great effect on the psychology. It gives us the willpower that we need. It destroys arrogance. It creates an amazing love and fear relationship with God. And it fixes like 99% of the cases of depression. We will talk about it in details inshallah later, but not now. Then we have Tawheed al uluhiyah Tawheed al uluhiyah is actually what I need to focus on right now. It starts with don't invoke or pray to anyone or anything other than God. And this destroys the whole concept of business of religion that we talked about in the episode Six Steps of Satan. There is no more temple priests scamming people and taking their money. There is no more popes scamming people and taking 10% of their income or selling indulgement parchments. No more scamming people into visiting tombs and sacrificing to the tombs of saints. No one can make any financial benefit from fake religion anymore. The second thing is, God is the lawmaker. As we see here in this verse, for example, in al hukmu illa lillah, God is the only judge and God is the only decision maker. Or this verse, for example, if God decided a matter, it's not permissible for any believing man or believing woman to have a choice in this affair. And whoever disobeys God and his messenger is in clear error. You cannot even twist the words of God and, you know, say, I have a new interpretation. This is my interpretation of the scripture like other people are doing. Because God already gave the authority of interpretation only to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And the legacy of the Prophet is written in like thousands of books. If, if you look at any Islamic library and count all the pages in all the books, it will be like literally more than two million pages. It is even in the Quran itself. It says those people who are trying to discuss the verses of God without authority to make an interpretation, all they have in their chests is arrogance and they will never succeed. So if you see these people, Fasta'iz Billah, I seek refuge in God from these people who are trying to make interpretations without authority. Another example here. وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Prophet give you, take it. Whatever he says, stay away from, you stay away from. It doesn't matter what you think, you, you obey the Prophet. Another example, God is swearing that they will not be considered believers until they ask you for judgment and when you give them your decision, they don't find in their hearts any resentment against your decision and they submit to you fully. God is talking about the Prophet, peace be upon him. In other words, it doesn't matter what you think, submit to the rulings of the Prophet completely. Another verse, when the believers receive the decisions that are made by God and his messengers, they say what? They say we hear and we obey. And those people are the successful people. This is why Tawheed is the basis for everything else. And this is why shirk is the unforgivable sin. If, if you're not familiar with the word shirk is associating partners with Allah. Because if you associate partners, that's it. Then we can discuss laws or we can make man-made laws or we can use our own opinions, and then we are confused forever. With Tawheed, we don't have the confusion, we hear and we obey, and with Shirk, we have the confusion and we debate all our lives. I had a nice conversation with one agnostic friend. He was asking a lot of questions like, what do you think about uh, the pro-life, pro-choice discussion? What do you think about uh, gender roles? Can I identify as a table? Can I identify as a chair? And I'm like, dude, dude, calm down. People were debating for thousands of years what is right and what's wrong. And you know what? They never agreed on anything. And even the stuff that they agreed on 100 years ago 
Now we consider this stuff wrong. People agreed on racism and agreed on injustice. So if people agree on something that doesn't make it correct, and you know what, whatever we now think is right, after 50 years we will think it's wrong. If you look at the last 1000 years, it never worked. We never agreed on something and it stayed for more than 100 years. It's always changing. And I told him, you know what, even if you are a wise man and you're educating yourself and you kept doing that for like 10, 20, 30 years, and after that you reached complete wisdom and you know what is right and what is wrong, first of all, you wasted your life. Second of all, when you preach your understanding of what is right and what's wrong to the world, they will not accept you. You will not convince them. And even if you convince some of them, it will be like, what, 50%? What about the other 50%? There will always be some idiots who will say, I respectfully disagree and I am entitled to have my own opinion. If you try to convince 100% of people that stealing is wrong, you cannot. There will be a very small minority that thinks that, why, why not? You know, it is just nature. Strong animals are eating weak animals, so why can't strong men eat or steal from or torture? I, I don't want to go into this, but the point is what? The point is you will never convince using debates and arguments 100% of the people. Even if you convince 99% of them and 1% of the society are robbers or rapists or whatever, that is enough to keep everyone afraid in his house. Convincing is not the way to go. And this is the beauty of Tawheed. We say that God is the king, God is the ruler, God is all wise, God is all powerful, God is the only one who gives us decisions. So we hear and we obey. What if I'm not convinced? Obey first, ask later. So if you don't think that stealing is bad, don't steal first because God said so, and then ask later what is the wisdom behind this decision. If you're not convinced that racism is bad, don't be racist. First, we hear and we obey, and then ask why later. This is the only way you can make sure that you have a safe, happy society now, not after 1000 years. We become righteous first, and then we ask why later. Pretend you bought an um, industrial machine from like a German company, right? And this machine has a manual, 100 pages manual. And this manual is like, this is how you put the machine on. This is how you put it off. This is how you change batteries. Uh, after 10 hours of working, you have to let it cool down. It has all the instructions. And you're like, nah, I don't want to read the manual. I will guess and we will debate and we will discuss and we will do philosophy. Read the manual of the manufacturer. The creator sent you a manual. Why are you confused? Just read it. We have our manual. It's called the Quran. This is the manual of humans from the creator of humans. So if you really, really are looking for what's right and what's wrong, instead of wasting 1000 years on debates that will end in nothing because we already tried, how about research? Is this manual, the Quran, really the words of God or not? And you know what? It will be very easy. You will find the truth. It wouldn't even take you one month of research to find the truth. Tawheed is what paves the way to worship. And in the next episode, we're gonna talk about what is worship according to Islam. So subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss it. It will be, inshallah, in three or four days maximum. And Muslims, brothers and sisters, if you wanna help spread the words of God and help our Dawah project, engage with the video with likes, shares, and comments so the YouTube algorithm will recommend it to other people. And if you want to support us financially, we will leave donation links under the video. Thanks and see you in the next episode. Assalamu alaikum.